Good morning, my dear friends. Welcome you all to an another interesting video. Normally, in HVAC cooling load calculation, which is done by HAP software, there are some factors which you normally consider as default because you are not sure about the purpose. For example, why the safety factor sensible 10 percentage, latent 5 percentage? So why not sensible 20, latent 10 percentage? So what is the reason behind this? Why this coil bypass factor 0 0.1 not 10 percentage? So why we should not consider 20 percentage? And also if you see the supply temperature, by default always HAP will come 55 degree Fahrenheit or if you convert to degree Celsius, it will be 14.4 degree Celsius. So we need to understand what is the uh, use of this all parameters, default parameters. So because most of the time we skip this default factor we directly go to the application output okay as an engineer you must understand the each and every point of what you enter so in this video i am going to tell you all the design issues which you will face during the cooling load calculation 15 important questions which might come to your mind during the calculation and lots of interesting things the design points the design ideas the design discussion so now let's start the video so this is the uh, hotel project ground floor plus four additional floors are there so here the parking is surrounding area we don't have any basement uh, parking area and you can see the different direction north south east and west so there is a lift outside and only this room number five we have uh, like uh, two king size bed so remaining all is a single one so for in this uh, project uh, i'm going to do the i'm going to consider this room this uh, room number five uh, and here we have one uh, attached toilet we have so this wall will be acting like a partition wall so in so this project i selected this room number five because the reason is first it has two uh, direct exposure one from the north side one from the west side so two exposed to wall so all other rooms it has uh, this room this all the rooms have only one exposure maybe you can say this this room have two exposure but this room is very big compared with all other rooms so and second thing uh, so this is the reason mainly i selected this room what i am going to do uh, i will do this uh, manual calculation with all backup formulas so to show you that how the things are working uh, for this uh, for this room and same thing i will do i will show you in the half software also so you can see the difference how these two things are uh, performed and second one more thing in this hotel project uh, this room uh, we don't have that much uh, appliance so but i want you to understand uh, like a fully packaged a full package in this video so i will assume some appliance also in this room so you can feel like everything is there here to is there everything is there so like that i am assuming and second thing here we have only uh, two king size bed so i want uh, like uh, i will consider like a four single bed so the load will be high so that is for your understanding only okay so these are the things we are going to do in this video so first we need to understand why cooling load calculation is difficult compared with the heating load calculation because for estimating cooling loads one has to consider the unsteady state process okay that means due to solar radiation from the sun the peak cooling load occurs during the daytime and there will be significant heat uh, changes in the outdoor condition throughout the day so in addition in addition to that we need to consider the internal loads also okay that we cannot neglect so thus cooling load calculations are more complicated but com coming to the heating load calculation during winter months the peak heating load occurs before sunrise and the outdoor condition don't vary significantly throughout the winter season so normally the heat load calculations are carried carried out assuming steady state condition that means no solar radiation and st steady outdoor conditions so before performing any project we need to decide first the weather property of the building so the question one which normally occurs to all the junior and junior and mid level person weather condition for the current year is 2024 is not available in the half software so normally weather conditions are selected from a long term statistical database okay it's not about 2024 2025 it's not like that the condition will not necessarily represent any actual years okay so if you uh, i have shown here the screenshot of the half software so i have taken the middle list uh, UAE and Dubai so you can see the dry bulb wet bulb and different parameters so if you see this data source it's mentioning 2001 ashtray handbook so if you change any value for example dry bulb wet bulb daily range this uh, data source of 2001 ashtray handbook will become user modified so that you always not, uh, notice this point so what the important thing here is so normally the solar loads and the building are assumed to be 
those that would occur on the clear day so when we are uh, taking this value so we are taking this value in the clear day in the hottest month okay for the calculation so clear day sunny day means there are no clouds in the sky so sometime if your local municipality has some special requirement like what you see here dubai green building regulation qatar construction specification for dry bulb wet bulb latitude uh, internal comfort condition so if there is any particular requirement then you have to follow that so you can ask me in my municipality uh, it's it's not a developing a developed country so in my municipality of my country i don't have any special regulation like this so what should i do so you can follow hap software to choose the nearby location but in the hap software there is one problem since hap software has minimum location loaded you can use as a climate condition for the selection of outdoor condition so there you can find lots of places for example if you see uae you can see only the dubai and abu dhabi in hap software but if you go to as a climate condition there will be lots of uh, values lots of uh, locations are there sarja and plenty of locations are there so we can follow the as a climatic condition but in uae or qatar and gcc countries what happened we have special regulations uh, the temperature like you uh, saw here so we are simply following that one rather than considering the astray climate condition but if you go to other countries then you can follow the astray climate condition and i will tell you each and every point how to consider the astray climate condition now so if you google it astray climate condition a page of uh, a page like this will open and here you can see the stations are there so if you go to station asia you can select in the asia uh, there will be india qatar and uh, every uh, places will come from there you can choose your location so in, in this case i have taken the dubai so the seat will appear like this and here some important points you can see the percentage of percentage value like for example here is the hottest month they have given here and here is 0.4 percentage 1 percentage 2 percentage there are different percentages there and second important thing if you see here monthly design dry bulb and mean constant wet bulb and here monthly design wet bulb and mean constant dry bulb so we need to and we need to know the exact meaning of what what exactly we need to consider dry bulb and mean constant wet bulb or normal wet bulb and also what is this percentage uh, trying to say so here the question what does 0.1 5 percent i mean in the above chart okay so this 0.41 and 2 percent is the term design condition refers to the percentage of time in a year for example in one year we have uh, 365 days so 365 into 24 hours totally 8760 hours for example if you see here uh, 0.4 percentage in this one and this is january february march april may june july and july and august so july and august we have 45.1 dry bulb temperature for For example, I consider this first one, July. It is 45.1, uh, 45.1 dry bulb temperature. That means 0.4, 0.4 percentage mean. If you see here, the 0.4 percentage mean it is 35 hours of 8760 hours. One percentage means 87.6 means 8 8760 hours. What is the one percentage? It is 87.5. So two percentage means. 8760 hours what is 2 percentage 175.2 similarly for 5 percentage means for this hours what is 5 percentage 438 so here 0.4 percentage of 45.1 means in the year only only 35 hours the temperature exceeded 45.1 so similar way if 2 percentage means in one year that means 8760 hours only for 2 percentage that means 86.7 hours only the temperature exceeded 43.4 so this indicates the percentage i mean that hours the temperature exceeded this value so finally the two percentage design condition means that the outside temperature summer temperature and coincident air moisture content will be exceeded only two percentage of hours like out of 8670 hours more than 88 hours it is exceeded this value that's all so the next question is should i consider the hottest temperature of hottest month for the calculation so practically saying this hottest temperature of cooling low for the cooling load it happens normally only few hours in a full uh, years so if you consider this hottest temperature of the hottest month surely we are going to over design but the problem here is we, if you see the local code uh, for example this is dubai so dubai if you see here uh, for the only for the 0.4 percentage time the temperature reach 
okay so that is the case but if you go to dubai municipal uh, dubai municipality so what you saw the value it was 46 degree celsius we have to consider as a dry bulb temperature so only 0.4 percentage of time it is 45.1 but uh, even though that is the case our local municipality says you have to consider dry bulb as 46 degree that time we have no option we have to go with this one otherwise there is a second option if you don't have any municipality condition as i mentioned here then you can go with the average 2 or 2 or 5 percentage okay rather than selecting the lowest value of 0.4 percentage so you can ask me uh, okay that time if the peak load is exceeded that limit what will happen the unit cannot get deliver its performance so if you see this point economically speaking short duration peaks above the system capacity might be tolerated at significant reduction in first cost okay this is the simple task benefit decision for each building design so in that in this case we can consider rather than selecting the highest uh, temperature we can go with the next option 2 or 5 percentage but again as i mentioned however if local courts recommends then that should be considered as a first priority okay so the next important point here is question 5 should i consider wet bulb or mean coincident wet bulb for the calculation and what is the difference okay so let me show you the same example here for example so if you see here at 2 percentage i consider the hottest month okay july i consider here so the dry bulb is 43.4 and mean coincident uh, coincident wet bulb is 24.1 same time if you go to the monthly design wet bulb at the same 2 percentage the wet bulb is 30.4 okay the wet bulb is higher than mean coincident wet bulb now let's see what is the difference so if you see here the point 0.1 so this is the important thing the dry bulb and wet bulb temperature will not be peak at the same time so our coil should be able to manage the requirement of both condition okay so if dry bulb is peak that temperature also the coil should manage wet bulb also it has to be man it has to manage so if i select the coil at a dry bulb 43.4 this one we saw in the first one above 43.4 dry, uh, dry bulb and mean constant wet bulb 24.1 degree celsius and when the wet bulb temperature reaches its peak value like 30.4 we saw the second one okay the below one so the coil cannot condense so that's the point so when i reach the uh, highest wet bulb temperature of 30.4 degree celsius the coil cannot condense the moisture and some of the moisture will be bypassed without condensation so that's the main reason so that's the reason we select the dry bulb and wet bulb at peak condition secondly the load of the coil increases because of the wet bulb not because of the dry bulb if you see my last video hvac unit selection i explained clearly about the sensible load sensible latent and by using the formula how to deliver the how to uh, derive the answer on this thing so the mainly this here the sensible load affects the dry bulb temperature the latent load affects the moisture content of the condition space so now this is the reason we select the wet bulb uh, and dry bulb instead of mean mean constant wet bulb instead of mean constant dry bulb okay so here you can see the indoor uh, design recommended condition that is normally 74 to 75 and later humidity will be 50 percentage plus or minus y so if you have any local municipality regulation of course you have to follow that only so in our case here is a um, uh, dubai municipality their indoor condition we have to consider 24 degree celsius or 75 degree fahrenheit and the relative humidity will be 50 percentage so now we need to find out uh, by using these two value we can find out what is the humidity ratio and wet bulb temperature from the cyclometry so here you can see 115 degree dry bulb temperature in the x direction and this is the wet bulb temperature this one so 115 degree dry bulb temperature and here we have the 85 degree wet bulb temperature so both meet at this point so, and if i take uh, a line like this so here we have the humidity ratio so 135 is the humidity ratio and humidity uh, this is the line you know that this is the humidity line uh, this uh, percentage as i mentioned here so this line is almost 28.8 because uh, this is the 30 percentage line what you see here is the 30 percentage line so it is slightly lower than 30 percentage so it is 28.8 similarly here the indoor condition the dry bulb is 75 degree fahrenheit and relative humidity 50 percentage so you can see here the dry bulb 70 degree fahrenheit and here the relative humidity is 50 percentage so both meet at this point and here uh, if i take this line up to this point it will be like a 65 humidity ratio so here we find out the humidity ratio because it is required in the com uh, coming calculations okay
So for this example, I am going to consider this uh, room number 5 which has the area of uh, 260 square feet. So 20 into 13 feet and the height of the room is 9.84. So the question here is should I consider the room height from FFL that means suppose for example the room is this is the ground floor. So this is the finished floor. This is the section. Okay. This is the section drawing. So from the finished floor level can I consider the height till the slab level. Okay, here is the first floor. Above we have the first floor. So from the finished floor level to the slab level, should I measure the height or the from the finished floor level to the ceiling level up to this point? Should I measure? Or so what is the concern? So what should we consider? So here you can see the first case one. Okay, the case one means in this project, let's assume the project has only supply duct. Okay. And there is no return duct due to lots of classes and economical condition. They are avoiding the return duct and they are installing the common plenum. So only a return dummy diffuser. That means there is a supply diffuser in the ceiling here. There is a return diffuser in the ceiling here. So there is only a dummy return diffuser installed in the ceiling. And common return plenum is available somewhere. That means in the corridor or somewhere it is available. That means what happened here? They have given one transfer grill here. So all the return air will go through this transfer grill to the corridor. And somewhere in the corridor, we have the common plenum okay to collect the all the return here then this from here the duct will go to the unit so this is the case so in this case return air is going through the ceiling void that means the return air from the space is going to the ceiling void and so return air will take the load of room space and ceiling space so the return air which is going from the space will take the load of this space as well as this space because it is going to the ceiling from the ceiling it is going to the air. Uh, plenum okay so that is the case so if you have this type of condition then what you have to do you have to consider the height from this level to all the way this one because we are taking the load of the space as well as the ceiling void okay it's not a closed loop it is a is acting is acting like an open loop okay this is the first condition so in this case you have to consider the full height now we have the second condition, we have supply diffuser here, we have the return diffuser here, we have the duct coming from uh, unit to here, supply duct, we have the return duct which is properly going to the unit. So in this case it is acting like a closed through loop. So in this closed through loop means you do, we don't need to consider the ceiling void heat. Okay, So we can consider the height from room height from, from the finished floor level, this point to the ceiling level. So we, do, we can omit the ceiling void. Okay, So this is the second case. This is the way to consider the room height first. So the next one is thermal zoning. Thermal zoning is one of the important concept in uh, HVAC. Uh, after uh, I, I explain this one, you can understand. So that means you can yourself uh, will evaluate. So the answer I got is correct or not like that. So you can get that that set of mindset, that kind of mindset. And I am going to tell you all the upcoming formulas with proper example for your clear understanding. So you can easily understand, uh, you can easily solve any type of project. And uh, since cooling load calculation takes some additional time, I will continue in the part 2 video. So till then, bye bye, see you.